Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just go with this elder. I believe there's somebody else that's saying, preacher, yeah, yeah, today is my day. I'm not going to let it pass me. I'm not going to let this opportunity slip by me again. I've been coming Sunday after Sunday, but I let the devil cheat me. I let the devil entangle me. But today, I'm going to let Jesus straighten my life out. Are you here? Step out. Step out. When I was 24 years old, I stood in the back of the church in a revival. And after the preacher had preached and made his altar call, first thing the devil said, if you go up there, everybody know you ain't nothing but a drunk, a drug addict. If you go walking up there, folk gonna snicker and grin at you. And everybody gonna doubt that you're serious about what you're doing. Just stay back here in the back. Just stay back here in the back. But the more I stood there, the more what the preacher said was burning in my spirit. Until after a while, water was running down my face. And I stood there as long as I could. And I went across the people to come out to the aisle. And I looked down the aisle. It looked like it was a thousand miles from where I was standing to that altar. But before I knew it, I was at the altar. Are y'all hearing me? And that night, the Lord took the needle out of my arm. He took amen the reefer out of my hand he took the wine and the whiskey bottle out of my hand I'm talking about an everyday addiction amen he took every nasty and unclean thing out of my heart because I was ready to surrender all and that's been since 1974 I haven't picked up no reefer no liquor no drug come on somebody he will clean you up he will sanctify you and let me tell you, if anybody would have told me it was this good, I would have cussed them out. But thank be to God, I had to experience it for myself. And the only thing I regret is like many of you, that I didn't get saved a long time ago. I know you're here. Come on, come on. Come on and try Jesus. Come on and try Jesus. Come on. This is your time. This is your day. Now you're going to remember this altar call. Because you ain't going to get too many altar calls this strong. But this is one if you die without Jesus. The Lord going to flash this one back before you when you stand before him. And say, so you remember how that preacher cried? And how that preacher, amen, he just went to an extreme to get you to come to me. Now here you are standing before me. And you had that great opportunity. And you want me to have mercy. He said, you are at the place now where mercy don't work only judgment you better come while mercy is calling cause when you stand before the God of mercy he's gonna be the God of judgment he's gonna take off the robe of mercy amen he's gonna take off the robe of grace when we are judged and he's gonna put on the robe of judgment and he's going to judge according to the word. He's going to judge every man, every woman, every boy, every girl according to the deeds done in their body. Every man, a man, every woman that committed fornication and adultery and didn't repent from it, he said, I'm going to judge you according to your deeds. Every man that felt like he was a woman rather than being who God made him and said that I was born like that, God is going to judge you for your homosexuality. For every woman that feel like a man and have tendencies for women, glory to God, he's going to judge you for being a lesbian. Every liar, every tattler, backbiter, and gossiper, every evildoer, every self-promoted believer who was trying to get glory for themselves rather than God. He gonna say, yeah, I saw what you did and because of their need, I allowed it to happen. Yes, they got delivered by your hand. It was because of my mercy, but they are delivered and you aren't. Because what I got to say to you is, you have been a worker of iniquity. Yeah, you preached. Yeah, you taught the word. Yeah, you did. People got delivered. People got healed and people were made free. But you yourself are going to be a castaway. Lord Jesus. 
But Jesus, I was in church every Sunday. He said, and that's what's so bad about it. You heard it, you heard it, you heard it, you heard it. And you did nothing with it. And to whom much is given, much is required. So your stripes are going to be many. I didn't know I was going to die this morning. I didn't know that. I mean, I've been going to the gym working out. I mean, I've been eating right. I mean, I'm in great shape, the best shape of my life. I, I, I didn't know that somebody going to be shooting at somebody and the bullet killed me. I didn't know that, Lord. Lord, I didn't know I was going to go to that restaurant and sit down and there's going to be somebody back there want to commit suicide who was fixing the meals, who said, since I'm going to die today, I'm going to put poison in everybody's food and kill everybody. I didn't know, Lord, that I was going to sit down, you know, with my salad, you know, and my veggies because, you know, I want to eat right. And I didn't know that it was going to be laced with poison. See, you don't know where death is. You don't know how people are thinking. You don't know. You could be riding alone in your car. Amen. All the safety devices on. Amen. Not on your cell phone. Not texting. Amen. Or doing anything to distract you. Glory to God. You're on the highway in your lane. Running the right speed. And here comes somebody down meeting you on a 16-wheeler, 18-wheeler. Glory to God. Who have a heart attack. Or have a sugar attack. Or have any kind of attack. And they get over in your lane and kill you. And now you stand before God and say, Lord, I didn't know it was going to happen like that. I, I I didn't know it was going to be like that. He said, but didn't you hear that preacher that you listened at Sunday? Beg you to get right while the blood is running warm. Now it's too late. Amen. You don't know where death is. And when I pick up the newspaper, usually about every other week, it used to be about every week, People are getting killed right here in Goldsboro. No big in Goldsboro is. You don't know when you're going to be an innocent standby or you're going to be an innocent victim or some crazy way of something happening. You don't, don't know every day you live. Amen. You know, I, 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 there's, a, there's a show that used to come on TV that made me really think. Amen. It would cause a thousand ways to die. Every day you live, it was talking about a thousand, some of you may have seen it, a thousand ways to die. Now, you know there's more than a thousand ways to die. And every day we live, we don't know where death is. And it looked like it's claiming more young people now than ever. We got too many parents bearing children now. Teenagers and young adults. When it should be the other way around. They should grow older where they'll be bearing their parents. It's crazy out here now. But we think it's cool, you know. Praise God. Just give me another tattoo. Hit me. Boom. And then for the most part, what we inscribe in our skin is satanic. It don't have no godly substance to it. We just live in a society where, amen, all we want to do, amen, is mark up the flesh, make a mockery of God. And then stand before him and want him to have mercy. It's going to be too late, baby. That's why I'm pleading so hard to you. That's why I preach so hard and beg you so hard to come to the Lord. Because when you stand before God, ain't going to be no mercy. But Lord, I want for 15, I want for 14. Yeah, but you came to a place in your life where you could reason. And you knew right from wrong. And you understood what it was to receive Christ or reject Christ. It won't like you were two years old. But Lord, wait till I get married. Wait till I finish college. Wait till I have my first child. And then, Lord, I get saved. Who said you're going to finish school? Who said you're going to get married? Wait a minute. Stop, stop addressing life as if you were God. We don't know how long we're going to be here. I know it got you standing, but we think better when we stand because the blood flows better. Hmm. Is that right, Dr. O.T.? Amen. There's a doctor in the house. Ah. Listen, listen. What are we going to do with this precious thing called time? This precious thing called life? 
Are we going to add a life of joy to it or a life of suffering and misery? I choose to do like many of you. I want to add joy to my life. And I got to say this and we're going home. It's 12, two minutes to 12. Amen. And you that are saved and have connected with God, watch for the disconnect. Because the enemy every day is pulling at your plug. <clears throat> He's trying to disconnect you from God. And you got to be watchful. We're living in that day and time now. That's the spirit of apostasy. In church, but not in Christ. Had a relationship with Christ, but now just running on the fumes. Did you get that? I said, had a relationship with Christ, but now we're just running on fumes. Know what the fumes are? Oh, I know how to do all the praise. I know how to do the worship thing. I know the songs. Oh, I know how to do the dance. You know, I know the things to say. I know the scriptures to quote. I know all the cliches. That's the fumes. But the reality of having a relationship with Christ is having a lifestyle that pleases God from day to day. And the only way that we can do that, Jesus, have to change your life. You can't do it yourself. I tried to get off of all that stuff by myself. I did for two or three days. Amen. And right back to it, even more greedier for it when you go back than what you were before you tried to get off. A lot of y'all can't relate to that, but let me give you something that most of us can relate to. Going on a diet. You work hard and you get your weight down where you want it. You're looking good. You don't change your wardrobe. You don't say, I'm going to give away all my fat clothes. And then a year and a half later, two years later, I'm glad I kept my fat clothes because I'm back. Some of us, we keep a relationship with God by like we stay on a diet. But we know all the formalities and the rituals. But when you stand before God, amen, he's going to judge you according to what you know. And if you don't do what you know, you know. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. God ain't studying your pity parties, what you bitter about, what you mad about, what you upset about. See, too many church folk have bit the evil pill. Amen. They just bitter and mad about something because things ain't going the way they want them to go. Things ain't happening like they're going. And they don't fell out with God. They don't fell out with everybody else. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But this is the time. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. In the Lord good. In the Lord good. Hallelujah. I said in the Lord good. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Elder Jackson, will you come, sir? Amen. I want you to go with this gentleman. Glory to God. Yes, sir. God is great and greatly to be praised. Just go with him, sir. Amen. I don't know why I kept staying there. But let me say this. Can I be totally honest? I had my sight on him. And I thought I had him when he raised his hand. But he didn't come out. So I had to go back in my bag. Hey! Oh, there's victory in the bag. Hallelujah. He's going to make a soldier. For the Lord, I see something on him.